So, um, so really what I'm gonna show you here is uh, really a, a, a big difference um, between a DIY approach versus a universal semantic layer approach. And so for the demo, of course, I'm gonna be using at scale as that universal semantic layer. I'm gonna be talking to Snowflake um, and I'm gonna be using a variety of BI tools. So, um, so let's go and let's go see, uh, let's go and see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move to my, um, my Windows environment and I'm gonna log in as Joe Average. So I'm Average Joe. Um, and uh, I'm going to log in uh, to my Windows environment. So this is important, right? Because right now I'm in my Windows environment and it knows I'm Joe. Um, and here I have my Power BI desktop already loaded up. And um, I'm going to go ahead and connect to Snowflake. So this is the DIY approach. I'm going to come into um, Power BI, which is a great tool. I'm going to go and use the database driver they have a connector already for Snowflake, and I'm going to go ahead and connect to that. Okay, so what am I going to see here? Um, so, okay, there's, this is my connection screen. And in my connection screen, let me go get my connection here. This is my, uh, this is my Snowflake instance. Okay, and I'm going to paste that in there. Uh, um, <clears throat> now, um, problem number one, I have to specify the warehouse. Now, if you know um, at all uh, uh, Snowflake, <clears throat> I'm gonna, you're gonna let the user, meaning the consumer of this workbook that's creating this, this, this uh, Power BI workbook is gonna be specifying their own data warehouse size. In this particular case, I'm choosing a 3XL, which is a pretty expensive data warehouse. So that is now gonna be embedded into every report that I'm about to build in this workbook, which means I'm gonna be using a 3XL Snowflake data warehouse every time, regardless of whether I need it or not. It's gonna be spun up. That's a, that's a problem. The second problem, which is much more um, um, subtle, but you notice that this radio button is highlighted on import. So most BI tools, including Tableau, and including uh, Power BI want you to import the data, extract it into their own engine. Uh, that's a problem because now you're creating a whole nother data store, you're creating more data movement, and you're obviously gonna have to scale down what you look at. Well, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna choose direct query um, instead for Snowflake. And that's because I want a live connection to my data warehouse. I don't wanna have to import and create static data. Okay, so what it's doing now is it's, I'm connecting to my Snowflake instance. And problem number three is that I get access to all this data. Um, you know what? I probably shouldn't have access to all this data. I see poor old Caleb has got his tables there. Um, we got all kinds of different sort of stuff going on here. And then look at all the, the different schemas I have. If you have a data warehouse, it's gonna get complicated. So now I have to find the tables that I want. So for today's demo, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be, I simply want to look at my sales by country. This is the most simple use case you can imagine, right? So I happen to know that my sales are in my sales log table. So there I have it. And there's my sales. That's good. But I also want to look at it by country. So I got to find my dimension table that has my country lookup. And let's see if I can find it here. Um, well, I have a bunch of dimensions. Um, I said I want to have countries, so I'm going to select that. And there's my countries. And I'm going to click load. So now what Power BI is doing, it's making a direct query, um, not as Joe Average. It's going to be uh, doing a, a query with using my credentials that I put in. Um, and it's now logging in and, um, and getting data from that sales log and, uh, and the geography country dimension that I think I'm going to want to use. Now, of course, it's got to load this into analysis services. Well, it's loading into Power BI. Power BI behind the scenes uses analysis services as the engine. So it's kind of, uh, uh, so, you know, it's, it's embedded in here. And so it's still loading, um, and this is just for two tables. Um, okay, looks like we're getting close here to, to me running my first query. If you're a, look, if you're an analyst like me, this would drive you crazy. Um, is it 
just to be able to explore, and I'm not kidding around here, it's, it's, it, we're, we're still running and this is on a 3XL just to be able to get my data. Still working on it. Okay, here we go. Um, okay, here's my data over here and I see my sales log. So that's good. Um, and I'm gonna choose uh, my sales amount. So that's, that's gonna be the amount of sales, of course, that I, just, that I, that I sold. Um, and so it's gonna run that query. And then I'm also gonna go and choose um, to do it by country. So I'm gonna click on country. Um, and so that seems simple enough, right? I did sales by country. So let's just look and see what my results were. Let me make it bigger for you. Um, well, that's obviously not right. There's no way that I can be selling everything and, and $46 billion across you know, every single country. So why did that happen? That happened, if I go to the data model tab here, it happened because I didn't connect my sales information to my geography dimension. And you may say, well, that's dumb. You should know how to do that. Well, that's a user. I just ran a Cartesian product on my sales, on my uh, Snowflake data warehouse, meaning it did everything by everything. And if I did this with large data, it would bring Snowflake, that Snowflake instance to its knees. So that was wrong because I didn't, I have to model the data myself. So now in Power BI, I have to understand how this model is constructed. So what am I gonna do? Um, well, I'm gonna need to connect up country. Um, I don't have uh, any way to connect country because this is all the data I have. It turns out that I have to first connect to the country where the sales happened through my customer because my customer has their address. And how do I do that? I don't know. I would have to go talk to IT or take a lesson on how our data is structured to understand that. So that's not a great approach. So um, let's go and see um, a better approach and let's go create a, a semantic layer. So I'm gonna pop to at scale um, and this is what we call design center. And this is what we call a, our canvas. So I've created a model and in the over here, you see I have dimensions and measures uh, for, uh, for this particular model. So instead of, um, so what I'm gonna do in Design Center is I'm gonna create a new vir virtual cube and I'm gonna call it Sales Insights. And um, in, it's gonna be called Greg because Greg is our is our, um, our guest of honor. So I've created a virtual cube and now I'm gonna go into my canvas. So here's what's really important. So I'm gonna define this business model. You can see I have a couple data warehouses here and I'm gonna define it. I'm connected still directly to Salesforce, to, sorry, to um, Snowflake. And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna and select that sales log table here and pull it onto my canvas. So, um, so here's my sales information. I'll go ahead and pull it on. So what's important here is that this is my data now, and this is the same data you saw in Power BI. The difference here is that I have the ability to use a library of the conformed dimensions. So rather than me having to understand how to join all that data together, I can simply pull in a data, date dimension. I can pull in a product dimension and I can pull in that customer dimension. Now, in order to hook all this up, all I need to do is to wire them up and create what we call a relationship. So I have my product key and I connect it to my product key just by connecting a line. So then what just happened there? What happened is that you can see that in my semantic layer, I automatically got my product subcategory and then I got a hierarchy of my products. And I got that for free because this dimension has been shared and defined once, and now I can use it many times. Let's do the same thing with customer and see what happens. So I connected customer, and now I have a bunch of customer information, including my geography. Um, and there's my country and state. So I automatically got that for free because that customer dimension contains its own geography dimension. That geography dimension is actually made up of multiple data sets 
and also a what we call a security dimension. So now Joe Average is only going to see what he can see in the Americas. Okay, so let's keep going back um, and let's finish off uh, this process because what I also want to do, it's no good if I can't report on time. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop in my order date and I'm going to put in a prefix called order. And I'm going to drag in my, um, my ship date and do the same thing there. Uh, and now I have not just the customer dimensions of products. Now I have all my hierarchies art automatically showing up for my date dimension. So I'm not done yet. I need to do a couple measures. Uh, I want to definitely look by look at sales. I'm going to put it into a sales metrics folder. I probably want to look at how many um, products were bought. I'll put that also in a sales metrics folder. And voila, if I look at preview, now I have my semantic layer right there. So all I need to do now is to publish this. And I'm going to publish this. Now, all the rules for what Joe Average should see are already have been defined in that, that customer dimension. So now Joe Average, because I set up my security in this semantic layer, and because I set up a group for my Americas, and because I assigned Joe Average to only see the Americas data, that means anything I do in whatever BI tool I choose is going to be restricted. Joe will only be able to see what he's, he should see. So let's come back here and let's do it the at scale way. So the at scale way is very much like you're used to doing um, with analysis services. So at scale looks to uh, Power BI and to Excel, just like analysis services. So what I'm gonna do um, is when I go ahead and get my data is I'm gonna choose the analysis services built-in connector here. So, uh, so, and I just choose the at scale server right here and look at this, it's highlighted on connect live. So I'm now connecting live, I'm not importing data um, and I get to see now there's my, uh, there's my project, there's the sales insights Greg cube that I just, just defined. So in really literally a few minutes, I've defined a universal semantic layer now um, and there's all my data. So there's my data, but it's rich this time. So now I got my sales information. You see, I have nice folders. You can see I can go ahead and run my query against sales amounts. You can see that I also have uh, my order dates, my, and then there's my geography dimension. Um, so there's my geography dimension. And in my geography dimension, I have multiple hierarchies. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose the, the city hierarchy. Um, and if I look at what's seen, what happens over here in my window, what I have is I have just what Joe Average can see. Joe can see United States and Canada because those are the Americas. Now, the other thing that's interesting is you look what's happened. You can see that because I have a hierarchy, because I have a dimensional model, besides having very nice, easy to read um, and organized metadata, I can now do great things like, you know what, let's do uh, include only the United States um, and let's filter on United States and let's drill down um, on United States to uh, my country and to my country level, sorry, into my state level. And there I have my, my California and let's go and uh, keep that. Um, and then let's go ahead and keep drilling down and drill down all the way to my cities. Um, and I'll change my, um, my visualization so I can see it better. I'll change it to a table and there's all my cities um, for uh, in all my sales by cities. So I got the right data. It didn't do a Cartesian product. It did the right thing. Why? And why did it do the right thing? Because if I click on this model icon now, what you see is that the model came along the at scale model, that single semantic layer all that relationships that I just created for you, that all comes with the connection. That means there's no way that people are going to get different answers or people are going to get um, wrong data or people are going to have to redo this model. It comes for free 
And all they have to do is pick and choose the metrics and the filters that they want to create their visualizations. So what happens in Excel? In Excel, it's the same thing. So again, because we've chosen a universal semantic layer that is, that is compatible with analysis services, you can have your cake and you can eat it too. So I can say, for example, let's go ahead and get some external data um, from um, Excel, if it will allow me. Um, uh, let's do this. Here we go. I'll do other sources and you can see analysis services is a choice. All I need to do is paste that in. I'm gonna use my Windows authentication. So that means that I'm gonna be logging in as Joe Average. So only data that Joe can see, he's gonna see. There you see my, my Sales Insights Greg virtual cube I just created. And let's go ahead and just create a chart with it. And what you're gonna see here is the same metadata that I just saw in Power BI. Um, and so I can run that same query, um, this time in Excel with a live connection. This is not a data import. You can't do this by, by connecting directly to, uh, um, to uh, Snowflake. Um, and now there's my same data that I got and I just saw in Power BI. And of course, because this is a, a direct connection, I can do great things by creating cells that directly reference cells in the at scale virtual cube and build very sophisticated models uh, without ever having to move data or without ever having to build or understand how to do data engineering and build a data model. So, um, so let's go back and let's just, let's just summarize kind of what we saw here in this, uh, in this case. Well, we saw a universal semantic layer. We saw all the best of SSAS um, in terms of the speed, in terms of the semantic layer, in terms of the MDX and DAX expressiveness. We saw the great things about how well it's integrated into my, the Microsoft stack, like, uh, like Power BI and Excel. I, have, I don't have time to show you Tableau, but it works great for Tableau as well. Um, but it really makes data analytics ready and easy to use. Um, and it promotes that consistency. So um, everybody's gonna be speaking the same language because the definition of attribution in Greg's case is gonna be the same regardless of whether they're consuming with Tableau or with Excel in Greg's case. You drive that agility. So someone like a team of Greg or even uh, users themselves can create those models and really get leverage out of reusing the dimensions and reusing the different objects in that, in that semantic layer so that they are able to create new views very quickly without creating a bunch of extra work. And you saw that me as Joe Average, I only saw half of the data. I only saw the data that I was supposed to see. And those, those definitions, that governance was built into that customer dimension. So regardless of who's defining these virtual cubes, that definition, those rules are embedded. And there's no way that Joe Average is ever gonna see anything in any type of combination outside of uh, what he's supposed to see. And if everybody's speaking the same language, if everybody's working off the same data, in this case in Snowflake, they're gonna trust the analysis and they're gonna trust the output. And that's what you really need to do um, at the end of the day.